day behind you, good times lie ahead. With company worth keeping, that a bash your smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open, you'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear. Cause we're the talk, talk, talk at the tavern. Here you're always welcome. The talk, talk, talk at the tavern. Promising beer and bed love. The talk. Music, medicine, then some The talk, talk, talk the tavern The song's over Here we come Okay, and welcome to the tavern This time we're going to be discussing I'm beautiful and I know No, I'm fat and I know How to get washboard abs without sit-ups That's what it is So I'm here with Aaron Aaron, give him some credentials So we know why we should even listen to any damn thing you say Oh, okay. Uh, cause I know stuff and I drink. Oh no, 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 that's somebody else. Uh, okay. Um, uh, that was me. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate. I'm studying the interaction of leadership and physical fitness, uh, which includes studying the proxies on actually how to do these kind of things, uh, specifically on how to develop washboard abs. Um, without actually having to do sit-ups and crunches and uh, exercises like that. Um, this but sounds really, so faddish, but we'll touch on that in a minute. Go ahead. Th there's actually science and stuff. And uh, it's actually Aaron Kennedy, MS, which stands for Mad Scientist. Pretty good. Uh, my wife's in the background going, uh-uh. <laughs> Take away but the quotes, just leave it She doesn't up. have an MS. She's got like an MPS or an MBA or something like that, or both. You, you, do, you do have a BS, MBAs. though, don't you? I do indeed have a BS. Like like a real one from a college, and an right? AS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's a. I, I have. I have. I have the same degree that Captain America has. <laughs> Which is? Would you like fries with that, sir? Oh, yeah, liberal arts. There you go. There you go. I didn't want to have to lead in. But, okay, so, uh, by the way, relating to the leadership and physical fitness thing, a lot of people don't realize, and I did a bit of a show on this just a few weeks ago, how important how you look is to how people respond to you. Now, people might be like, no shit. Yeah, it is obvious, but so many of us, don't do something as simple as pulling our shoulders back or make eye contact. These two things, let alone clean clothes that aren't torn, ripped, or perhaps even wrinkled, will totally change how every person you work with reacts to you. It is totally true. At work, I would go in in shorts and a t-shirt just like everybody else. As I was heading to do the job interviews... I subtly changed how I wore, what I wore. Instead, it was Hawaiian shirts and retro bowling shirts. Now, I didn't lose weight. I didn't get taller. I didn't get a different haircut. But I made sure my facial hair was trimmed nicely. My clothes were clean and straight. And I went from shorts to the collared shirts. Suddenly, people are treating me like I'm their boss. Now, as the cold weather hit, I shifted from shorts to long pants. I now have managers coming to me for things. It's a subtle change. Now, the whole time they had a certain level of, you know, I might not even be arrogant if I say a certain level of awe because it's, it's not necessarily untrue. And anybody who is confident in their workplace, you know this, where they have this, like, it's a borderline adoration where they're kind of afraid of you but want you to like them, etc., <laughs> there you go, that's right. Tajinter's got it. The difference between a villain and a supervillain is presentation. And that's how you become president nowadays. <laughs> well, and I think I've uh, discussed this on a previous presentation, or previous stream, mm -hmm. was when you've looked at, historically, the taller of the two candidates yeah. is the one that becomes president. Uh, when they're the same height, the better looking of the two candidates becomes president. Uh, in the pre in the last election, they specifically took Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump and moved them across the stage. And in the background, they made sure that their heights on the screen 
the tops of their heads were equal when they were next to each other so that one did not have an un unfair advantage against the other. You could be sure that was coordinated. Okay, psychology is important for how people perceive you is what it boils down to. And simple, small changes. Now, first of all, it'll help your own confidence in EO just by pulling your shoulders back and making eye contact. Also, go look up confidence poses like hands on hips. You know, uh, go look it up. It's worth it. But what we're here to talk about is I got this gut, Aaron, and I don't want to pay a gym membership. I don't mind doing stuff at home, you know, like that little rolly thing that's kind of like a sit-up, push-up thing or chin-up bar I can hang in a doorway or a pad under my ass so I could do sit-ups. A uh, waste of money. Is it really? Yep. Even the chin-up bar? Because you're, you're not going to get money. The, huh? Say again. Waste of money. Even the chin waste of money. Even the chin-up bar? All of them. All of them. <laughs> <All of> them. <laughs> Jordan Peterson nailed it. P present the image of success, and eventually that image becomes you. Uh, yeah, fake it till you make it is not an untrue statement, my friends. Mm -hmm. But you got to believe oh, okay. it. Okay, so, go ahead, Aaron. Yep, Jordan Peterson, he is the one that I said, hey, you want to be the guy that's invited back to the party. Um, okay. So, abs, okay? Washboard abs, okay? Right. Your core is one of the strongest muscle groups in your body. Define okay? core. Because you're standing, your core, okay? Core. Legs, arms, all this stuff, it supports your body pretty much 24-7, okay? It is already tight muscles, okay? The problem that you run into is we eat too much, so it gets fluffy. Okay. For men and women, fat develops around it. The problem that we run into is you got fat around it. So the way that you get washboard abs is you remove the fat around the core. Okay, so you're saying, now I've heard washboard abs are genetic and certain people will never get them no matter what they do. Bullshit. Okay. If you lose, if, if your body fat percent drops down to about 6 to 8 percent, you will have washboard abs. Just because your layer of fat is gone and it's showing the muscles underneath instead of the fat above. That's what you're telling me. That is correct, sir. Now, uh, I know abs aren't actually like three and three like this. Aren't they like two and three like this? And which side has more? What? Okay, no, no. They are actually, there's actually ten, there's ten down to the Adonis belt. Okay, so it's five and five. Now, when you hyper develop them they will offset oh on one side or the other so yeah. when you get your arnold schwarzenegger's at the height of his height of his career right that is when you start seeing the hyper development the, the height of his bodybuilding career just to be clear guys go on <laughs> yep so they sit kind of like this uh -huh. okay but once you're down to the four percent body fat and stuff like that for men um you can start hyper developing them with crunches and things like that but that's well beyond washboard at that point you're building the muscle to make them kind of make that skin stretch mm. that sounds unhealthy but you don't need that let me read a, a couple quick comments oh look at who's coming in let's hold up a glass for Wright and his crew so here's to you Wright. You got a raid call, man? <laughs> and hello to everybody else popping in. We are actually discussing how to get washboard abs without sit-ups. So you didn't miss much. We just started the topic. Got about 45 minutes left in it. Aaron's got some credentials and shit. Raids work however you want, right? It's that easy. You did it fine. You did it perfect. Awesome trend. Well done with the hype. Um, some people will create a command using stream elements or stream labs that they will post that command that it shows what you want people to copy paste so when you go to the raid everybody paste it into the new channel and everybody basically you you hype yourself you promote yourself now she's hyper instead of hype <laughs> um 
A couple points I do want to hit on here is Tajinter says, if your core wasn't in good shape, you'd cheap shape like a taco. Um, and mentions, you know, with the abs are already there, you just remove the marshmallow cream covering. And then, yes, not Arnie's political yep. career, though that was impressive also. Right, if I can give you any help with that kind of stuff, man, please let me know. We could do it back channel or we could do it straight on air. We can twin stream and get on Skype together and walk you through it, buddy. I don't mind. So it, it's always good to help somebody. And I appreciate you sticking with that subscriber. It's, uh... <laughs> That's right. Trin threw up there the description of what the channel is like. Happy to help, right? Let me know. If I'm doing a topic with guests, not quite as much, but I'll bring you on as a guest, and we'll do a whole stream about setting up your Twitch stream. I don't mind. Absolutely good. But here's you. Thanks for coming out. Oh, we just talked about eating last show in the last hour. <laughs> Lurk on, my friend. Anybody that came in with them, do follow the channel if you want to comment or chat. If you haven't already headed out, appreciate you coming in and taking a look what it's about. We're going to go on with the topic. Jump in as you like or not. Now, Aaron, what were we saying? Sure. We're, we're talking about basically you remove the fat from over the muscles. Now, it showed, now, is this the same thing for like showing definition in arms or shoulders or chest? Okay, so... Basically, what you got is you've got the human body, right? I you do. are a skin suit. Remember, Egg, uh, remember Egger from uh, Men in Black? I remember him intimately. Yes, yeah, so, good. Okay, so you got a bug in a skin suit. That's you. Okay, I'm that slightly skin disgusted. Suit, Go on. Yep. Don't let the interruptions interrupt. You got to friggin'. <laughs> yep, you got to get the fat out of the skin suit. Okay. Now, muscle is underneath there, and I'm not exactly a big guy or anything like that. I got, eh, whatever. If I wanted to have definition in the arms, mm -hmm. I'd have to go work out. Okay. And develop the arms. Okay. So that's a no to so, my question. Correct. Now, on the abs, I showed them off in last show. If I want to show off the abs, my abs are already developed because I'm working them constantly, walking around, doing things like that. Right. My legs have got good definition. I just got to get rid of the fat. But the arms, not developed. Okay. So some areas, not developed. Some areas are developed, and you got to get rid of the fat. Okay. So <clears throat> besides just losing weight, when we come down to exercising to develop these things and let's face it if you're doing sit-ups you're going to develop more than just abs if you're doing push-ups it is developing your abs also in addition to the upper body um, and something I mentioned to you the other day and here's where I want to start we could roll back to these other things unless you want to start on them we mentioned planking because planking to me yes. seems so super easy until you do it for 60 seconds and you're like, oh, I see what happens. Um, but apparently planking is good for the arms, the shoulders, the chest, and the abs, as well as the mm -hmm. thighs, I believe. Uh, it's good. Okay, so the way our muscles work, okay, because you're a skeleton, okay? I am. And you got, again, you're a bug in a skin suit. Will you stop calling me a okay. bug? The fuck? <laughs> well, our muscles, flexors and extenders and all that stuff, depending on what you're doing. Right. All right. When you're planking, you're using all of them in conjunction. You got to kind of lock everything out. And it's really hard to do that all at once. Whereas when you're doing sit-ups, you get a reprieve on each one. A little bit at a time makes it a little bit easier in some ways gotcha planking it's all at once so it's tension so it's really hard to do for 60 seconds to two minutes which one works but faster and better better yes there's less impact on a plank see impact is important because i have like a torn ligament in one of my knees etc etc um okay 
impact so. is everything for exercise. Okay? Because but you just the more you impact, the more you destroy your body. You are a biomechanical oh. machine. Okay, so impact is bad. It's not everything. It's what you don't want. That makes it everything. Eventually, you will destroy this machine to the point where you cannot use it. If I do it right, yeah. Go on. So, unless you're out, therefore, then I can come up with other stuff. Yeah, you you don't want to destroy the machine. Therefore, you have to look at impact. Okay. Um, runners beyond a certain point, beyond a certain speed, blow out knees, blow out ankles. So they switch to bikes. So impact becomes super important. So hey, you got to have the right shoes. Boxers, the reason they wear gloves is so they don't destroy their own hands, which causes escalation of force. Football players wear helmets so they don't jar up their own head, which escalates force, which causes impact, and so on and so forth. Hey, you want a so, quick tangent here? Reduction of impact. So you think if we're actually an advanced and hyper-intelligent species, we would have such violent sports as entertainment? Oh, hell no. Yeah, I feel like our violent sports really are a reflection on how primitive we still are. Um, and I think, frankly, a gladiator ring would be a better option than some of the sports we currently have. Though baseball is kind of a skill set thing as opposed to a violent thing. But anyhow, I digress. So, I want to be happier with my body. So, we, last time we talked about weight loss, which... There's a mm -hmm. starter, there's a get going, and that's all a matter of willpower and self-control is what weight loss boils down to. Besides the technical science of less calories, etc. To Ginter says, yes, the fact that we're actually willing to put limitations on our own blood sports is a great step. To Ginter, you're such a hopeful guy. The fact that, but we'll kill off whole fucking country. <laughs> Another topic, my friend. I'll bring you on. We'll discuss geopolitical evolution. Wow, maybe I should bring you on for that too, Aaron. Geopolitical evolution? Let me write that down. Okay, so... We discussed weight loss, which is going to help show the actual muscle underneath the layer of fat once you remove a fair portion of that fat and get down to a certain body fat. So now mm -hmm. I want to create some toning. I want to create some right. prettiness. Not necessarily bulk out. I'm not looking to be Schwarzenegger or anything. And low impact. Because I do recognize I have certain conditions within my body, uh, whether it's sciatica headaches, migraines, or the knee and the ligament thing that I mentioned. So impact things are not going to be good for any of those conditions and problems. So what are we doing here? Right. What do we do? Um, you, you want stuff that's non-impact, so uh, exercise bikes, um, swimming. Okay. Almost no impact. There's almost no impact in any kind of swimming. Um, Especially walking. in the Olympics. Somebody just got upset with that comment. Don't stop talking when I interrupt. Just pause for a moment and keep going. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no. Um, I'm thinking uh, walking. Uh, humans are actually very good walkers. Um, planking is a good one. Um, running below a certain speed, depending on whether or not you've been previous injuries. Um Push-ups aren't bad, uh, depending on how your shoulders are. My shoulders are fine, yeah. And I know the chin-up bar, um, it exercises other muscle groups, depending on what kind of definition oh, yeah. or not you're looking for. So, oh, uh, lats, shoulders, right. biceps. Right. Um, and I have one of the... See, this is something I'm curious about. When it comes to, okay, the chin-up bar that I have, it's kind of that hooks over the door frame and it blocks off on mm -hmm. the outer door frame, the, the verticals. But you can also take it down and use it as a push-up bar, which is essentially mm -hmm. push-ups with a 5-inch 
you're jacked up five extra inches. Does that make any fucking difference at all? It does. Um, so when you raise yourself up on a push-up, you're reducing re resistance. So when you raise your front, because then there's other people that put their feet up on the bed or the cedar chest or whatever. Which increases your resistance. Okay. So you're saying if you raise the upper body up, it's a little more of a wimpy push-up. If you raise the lower body higher than the upper body, you're making it tougher. Yeah, you're adding gravity or reducing gravity. Okay. What about just doing girl push-ups from high school where I cross my ankles and put my knees on the ground? Again, reducing gravity. I just feel like those don't do anything at all, really, to be honest with you. Um, couple well, no, no, no. It, it, but mm -hmm. the, uh, there was a guy who was trying to figure out kind of the effects of weight on his workout and whatnot. Uh -huh. So he put on like 35 pounds um, as he was of increased muscle his calories. Fat? Put on, oh, fat, straight fat. Okay. He increased his freaking calorie intake. Um, and then he took it back off. But the way he did it, and then to, to take the weight off, he had to start back with girly pu push-ups. And he started off at a desk at 45 degree angle and then when he finally got back to the ground he had to do the girly push-ups um to get himself back up into shape and it, he said it was hard but his mood and the depression and things like that um the effects of gravity are insane so Tajinter says you're changing the leverage so it changes things make sure you're doing correct push-ups and not butterflies okay here's something else i'll tell you guys Physical fitness changes your mood. This is true. Matter of fact, the book that I just recorded as an audio book mentions things like this. Um, activity helps. If you're having a down day, go for a walk. Yeah, being outside, whether it's raining, snowing, sunny, whatever, is going to help you. But it's also going to, just the movement and the blood flow is going to create a chemical change in your body. That's good. So when we're facing depression and anxiety here, which is increasing drastically over the past 10 years as smartphones come out, we're also reducing a lot of other things that we used to do. You know, like go outside and do shit. Couple comments. Tajinter says, had to do that when I broke a rib during training. Trin says, I noticed that in me, when I run in the morning before work, at three, it makes me feel so much better. Trin, absolutely. Your body and mind are definitely connected. Tajinter says, so taking a shower also helps. It's hard to be happy when you're dirty on a cellular level. Tajinter, I actually have a whole section about that. So you're absolutely right. Taking care of yourself, even in a small way, like bathing, makes a difference in your mood. But this show is not about anxiety and depression. Um... I just wanted to mention the things we're discussing can also help with that and make a huge difference in that. you got to keep in mind, as Aaron keeps saying, the body is a machine. If you do certain things, it releases certain chemicals. Now, if you're having depressive thoughts and inactivity, it releases one batch of chemicals. If you are active and having positive thoughts, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show with your attitude and presentation... It releases a different set of chemicals. Even if you're not feeling them, they are being released. And they will make a long-term effect if you continue to do that thing that releases them. In either direction. So keep that in mind. It's important to <clears throat> not only feel good here, but your whole body. And the two are very much interlinked. And as somebody who when have seen all sides of this, speak from experience listen to me and do what I tell you damn it okay Aaron so we're talking about push-ups what about sit-ups here because we're talking about how this you know rolling around on your tailbone and stuff like that definitely at a certain point in your life which might be earlier for some later for others you want something under that tailbone when you're doing sit-ups don't do them don't do them don't do them. Okay, what do you do uh, Unless you're in the military mm -hmm. and you are forced to do them, do not do them. Why? They're horrible for you. They cause... 
your spine is not designed to bend like that. Okay. You work at Amazon, right? Yes. And you are, hey, you have to lift things up. What do they tell you whenever lifting something up? Yeah, bend at the knees. Right. So, what is, if you're laying on your back and you're trying to pick something up, you're lifting with your back to do a crunch or a sit-up. Why would you follow the opposite advice doing that but if you're doing a proper sit-up you should not be curving your spine when you're doing it your spine should remain straight it's impossible uh i would tend to agree with you i mean i know the theory you want to keep your shoulders back your shoulders even with your hips as you roll them forward so it's supposed to be lifting with the stomach muscles and the hips um and, and by the way, Tajinter says most people don't know that. Tajinter, correct. Most people don't. And they do curve the spine, which is not how you want to do a sit-up. Aaron, as for being impossible, you are going to curve it a little bit no matter how good you are. It's going to happen. By the way, I want to read another comment from Tajinter. He says, we're talking about fat and inactive, and that has a correlation to depression. But remember, correlation does not mean causation or ice cream would be responsible for drowning or put it another way, pencil, pencils would be responsible for novels and guns would be responsible for killing. It takes more than just the tool. It takes more. Um, so, yes, you're correct. And depression kills right. it, worse it, than guns. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, but my point is if you're going to have a sit-up, there are just better tools in the arsenal to use tell to us sit up. up okay planks right mm -hmm. off the bat now planks elbows or hands when planking either or friggin uh, personally i like this method okay um one it's easier to control mm -hmm. um and less chance of muscle fatigue and falling straight on your face less to, less to less chance to break your nose right and if you do fall it's a smaller distance Mm-hmm. Pillow and uh, that's just a personal preference. Right. And easier to control yourself. Fair enough. So what else besides uh, planking? If you're gonna do push ups anyway, mm -hmm. friggin' go ahead and use your hands. Uh to Ginter says burpees are both better and so much very worse. Than sit ups. What is a burpee? I keep hearing it. People keep explaining. I keep forgetting. Apparently, it's ridiculous in my head, and I can't hold the knowledge. It's it's like a sit up mountain climber and push up all crammed into one. Or right. not a sit up, but that's why I don't do it. The easiest thing to do is to look it up on Google and so go, you start oh, with a push up. Um, you jerk your legs to a bent position under you, then you stand up, and then you crouch back down, drop to a. Push up, kick your legs out lengthwise. Okay, with a jumping jack. And a margarita. Yeah. And, and, and a crowbar. And an attack by an alien. You're just adding shit now to Jinter. Um, no, it's I, with my one torn ligament on my knee, I don't tend to do things that put stress on that even more than, you know, normal day to day life. So, yeah. <laughs> to Ginter says, then repeat until you throw up and hate everyone. Well, that's my daily routine to Ginter without any burpees. <laughs> okay, and Trin says there's many uh, versions of the burpee. I just want to know who came up with that name. <laughs> How the fuck did that happen? You think it was a drunk redneck? Hi, Homer! <laughs> Ask Mo for another round, and I'm going to show you the new exercise I'm doing. Yeah, they're very popular on the uh, the Spartan runs. What is a Spartan run? Uh, it's an obstacle course. Uh, they got three or four different levels. I've done the 10-mile uh, the ten, the ten version of it. Um, it's a 10-mile obstacle which course? Which is fun. It's 10 miles with obstacles every mile or so. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Is it consistent obstacles or do you just have like a 30 foot stretch every once in a while that you got to go through something um about once a mile i think it was 
like nine obstacles or so. Okay. Um, okay, so about yeah. Yeah, you go uh, a they mile. got a three. Yeah, they got a. They got one that's like a three mile version with ten obstacles. A ten mile one with like ten obstacles, and then a thirty mile version with like thirteen obstacles. Now, is one of those obstacles an angry man who tries to kick you into a pit? There's I feel, pits. I, I feel like if there's not, you're doing it wrong because I've seen the movie. Um, mm-hmm. Trin says, my uncles do the Spartan race every year. Tajinter says, did the mud run a couple years back for my criminal justice class? Is that so you know how when people escape from prison, what they have to go through? <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Billy Bob, they headed into the swamp. They're doing the mud run. Go get the hounds. It's, um... Okay, so we've got avoid basically impact things, which is why burpees are yeah when possible yep. when possible right um, when, uh, when possible not impossible right yes when possible come here hold on I gotta get a cat out from between me and the cameras there we go so let's see here if you're trying to get and we already discussed the bottom line to showing abs without pronounce uh, working out to pronounce them is basically lose the weight and your natural it, that's exactly it will show up so now let's talk more about getting fit okay now most people they you know when anybody says i don't have time to whatever i point out okay well how much social media did you do yesterday? How much TV did you watch? You have time. You just choose how you distribute your time. Well, no, i got to point this out. How much time does it take to not eat? All right, okay, none. Okay. And uh, one of the biggest things that you run into is we, as people, have made it a bad habit of linking social outings with food. Yes, but, I've always found it crazy that a first date is to go something, go to do something that makes you produce poop. It feels anti-sexual. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, to Ginger totally, I made a poop reference right there. Um, it's an excuse. Twenty minutes is a good start. Most people use more than that. Sitting on the shitter. Aaron, where I was going with this comment as I started it, though, is, sure, maybe some people can't run. Because, for example, where I live here, I will not go bicycling or jogging. Because this back road I live on, people zoom by at 60 and 70 miles per hour. You're just... No, that's perfectly reasonable. Yeah, so what else can people do for, I guess, a stationary bike? Stationary bikes, great. Uh, you know what? There are lots and lots of them available on friggin' Facebook Marketplace. People <laughs> use them as clothes hangers all the time. Uh, lots of great treadmills that they can walk on. Uh, people use them as clothes hangers all the time. Um, Does it feel uh, anti-productive or weird to you that us as a species are creating these things? Because... Hell, even 200 years ago, we got our exercise by just living our lives. Uh-huh. You know, let alone 2,000 years ago or 20,000 years ago. So now, to get our exercise, exercise and fitness is not included in our daily lives. We have to create an environment to do these things. And my logical brain goes, well... Why create an environment if you're obviously not using that skill set? No, I know the answer. For your health. Good. What? Well, what you can do is you can start posting things up. Go, I will chase you around my property for $10 a day. I will dress up like a wacky redhead or redneck and go, yeehaw! I think I'd instead offer to dress up as a cartoon character of their choice. You could do that too. But that's fifty dollars a day. That is. <laughs> Plus costs of the costume. Tajenter says sweatpants made for working out, used for everything but working out. Tajenter 
there is a new term out there. Okay, so yes, we had sweatpants. They're not calling them sweatpants anymore. The fuck did I see them called the other day in the store? And I'm like, yes, Aaron. Yoga pants. No, they're past yoga pants. And yoga pants are kind of like exercise leggings? Um, and of course, there's huh? bicycle pants, which have this huge menstrual pad to protect your junk from the bicycle seat. But no, there was... Uh, Andrea and I saw them in the store the other day. They're no longer calling them sweatpants or yoga pants. They might be joggers, Trin. That might be it. Um, but I have pajama bottoms or lounge pants. And I agree to Ginter. If we're going to create fitness wear, use it for fitness. On the other hand, let's create something for lounging, too. There, there is nothing wrong. Like a smoking with... jacket? I got one right behind me. Hanging up on the I door. I know you do. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The smoking jacket had a, you, you put it over your other clothes when you were smoking so you didn't carry that smell with you afterwards. Um, you know, kind of like the same way a plague doctor would wear that mask to protect him from disease. It worked, right? Um, a little bit, maybe. So, uh, there is a thing called a leisure suit, but it's not what you think it is. <laughs> Go look up the game Leisure Suit Larry. Aaron may remember that game. I do. Never played it. I have never played it. Have you? Oh, it had the uh, the Control B feature. What was that? What did that do? It took you to a random work appropriate website. It was the boss feature. Gotcha. See, Leisure Suit Larry was a bit adult-oriented, if I remember correctly. But like I said, I've never played it. Yeah, it was like Monkey Island, but boss. It was uh, all about getting you laid. There you go. Uh, no, like a silky, snuggy-like thing. Snuggy like the blanket with hand holes and foot holes in it? Which, by the way, I have no, no idea. No, no, it was like... Good. Oh, go ahead. I was just saying... Uh, it was... Uh... It was like a flight suit, um, or uh, it was like a pair of coveralls. A onesie. Yeah. See, when it comes to Snuggies, I have no idea why they got such a bad rap. Now, I do understand why people mocked them and teased about them. I'm with them on that one. But to give it a bad rap, let's face it, Snuggies look uber comfortable. They're a fucking Especially blanket. Especially if they're uh, sloth snuggies. Yeah. 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 They're, they're, they're a blanket that you're inside of. Where's the downside? I hear a cat arguing with somebody out here, and I'm wondering who it is. Andrea's 18-year-old cat decided to roam the house today. Instead of hiding what? in her own room. Yeah, instead of hiding in her own room where she's normally secluded... I didn't think that cat could move more than three feet square. Oh, she'd probably kick every cat's ass and that lives in this house. Every single one of them. She is a scrappy old thing. Trin says, why were they being dissed? Uh, because of the type of people that bought them. Basically, they were bought by a certain... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? part portion of our population a certain anyhow um okay white trash got a hold of him is what it boils down to and but no i i don't i understand why they were made fun of i don't understand why people like fanny packs i understand why people made fun of them you guys got a part of me. Aaron, if you would talk about something, I need to check on this before somebody gets hurt. No problem. I mean, fanny packs just, they got made fun of because they friggin' outlived their usefulness. The, the leisure suit was kind of the, one of those weird things. The Snuggie was houseware 
That's one of those weird ones. I don't know why that one really ever got made fun of. Okay, I got eight out of nine. One, two, three, four, five. Let me just go find one more cat. I'll be right back. It's uh, the elderly cat has returned to her quarters. The queen mother has... The queen. Done her thing. Queen mother! So who am I looking for? Otter. Hi, Tran. How you doing? Okay. That was an exciting adventure. Yeah, the Queen Mother decided to leave her quarters today and go to the back of the house. And there she spent the day lounging on Andrea's side of the bed till just now where she decided to go pee in her own box instead of the... because she gets her own. Tran has to work tomorrow. I have other duties tomorrow. Okay. He said duty. So between everybody here, but especially Aaron, what else can we mm -hmm. do fitness-wise on a day-to-day -day basis? And I'll lead in with, you know, watch your diet, watch what you're taking into your body. But beyond that... Uh, sit less. Just sit less. Stand more, sit less. The number one thing you can do is support your own body weight. Okay, so gravity is a mofo. Okay, so if you are supporting your own weight, that's all energy. That's energy that you are burning doing something. You see people that have got standing desks and stuff like that? Right. They're burning more energy than people that are sitting at a desk. Gotcha. So get up off your ass. Yeah. Or at least cr crouch. Okay. Yeah, at least. Well, no, friggin'. Well, what I'm saying is crouching is still supporting your own weight. You're just crouching while doing it. Yeah. Um, also, if you do have a desk job by some chance, not only do you want to stand up, but you can do those 45 degree angle push ups or stretches while you're on the phone. Or whatever take time to do all that it's good it's good well, get now, up every once an hour get up walk around the the office for five minutes right right take the coffee break absolutely now Aaron we have probably about 25 minutes left in this topic you have a good night trend thank you for joining us here's you we will see you probably tomorrow it might just be me. I don't know if anybody else is joining. But Aaron, what I'd love to discuss, and we could go back to the original topic. Basically, the bottom line is, when you look at something like washboard abs, people are not getting mm -hmm. washboard abs for fitness reasons. They're getting it for vanity reasons. They're getting it for... Oh, aesthetics. Right. They want to feel good about themselves. So let's shift Good this. on them. Right. We'll do, Trin. We'll do. Um, let's shift this in that direction to feel okay. good about yourself, which we started this whole topic talking about this with posture and eye contact and whatnot. Um, and I think this goes right up your alley with the you know physical fitness versus leadership. Um, and to Ginter, I think you might have some... What, what are you... Why? Oh, sorry. Eye contact. <laughs> That's it, baby. Make it creepy. Um. <laughs> and for our viewers, this is what we're doing for the next 23 minutes. <laughs> wow, I've never noticed your eyes before. You have two. Mm-hmm. At least. <laughs> That's right. I see. So, when we're talking about 
because the reason you want to look good is because you want to feel good. This all goes back to perhaps the topic that we kind of avoided in the beginning, the depression and anxiety. And anxiety is incredibly more pronounced than it was even 10 years ago, let alone 30 years ago. When I turned 18, therapy was, it had come into play, it had been around for a bit, you know, especially it kind of came to popularity in the 70s, going to a therapist, but, uh, or an analyst. They actually called them analysts back there. The analyst is something very different now. Um, well, now they're analyst therapist or anal therapist. Or anal the rapists? Yeah, that's, I was building that joke. I was working up to it. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so there are other ways to make yourself feel good. And by the way, again, I, I reiterate the, what we've been talking about for a while now, and that's regulate your diet. Get your body to a point where you're not harming yourself. Stick to moderation. This, The physical side is going to help the mental side. And I think the hardest part is, you know, this is where we'll go with this one, Aaron. Are we boring you? So let's Just go. Just adjusting my feet. Let's go here. <clears throat> the hardest part of any of these things is the motivation. The kick in the ass that you got to give to yourself. The stick to whatever you want to call this. The willpower to do this day after day after day. Now, here's what I'll tell you guys. Whether it's quitting smoking, stopping chewing your nails, doing exercises, adjusting your diet, don't skip a day. Or writing a book, don't skip a day. Do it every day. Make it part of your life. Make it part of your daily routine. Whatever it is. Develop a habit. 22 right. days to develop a habit. There, there's an old saying with writing, which applies to all these other things. Do it until it hurts to not do it. Um, See, what I like to do is I like to put the picture of the black eyed peas up on my freaking computer. That way I have will I am power. I did like him in Rio, by the way. The movie. I'm sure he's good in the... Mm -hmm. City also, but I almost said country. What an embarrassing faux pas that would be. <gasps> Jesus would be and go from like this to like this. So, how do we maintain the willpower to keep this shit up every day? Any tips or secrets? Just do it. Yeah. He's not Don't wrong. Don't be a fucking quitter. Yeah. He's on. I'll drink to that because I'm not quitting. Um, no, he's absolutely right. You know, Nike had this really kind of moronic catchphrase that they brought in. And it's just do it. Um, and it's brilliant in its simplicity. People who do not dissect those three words and how they group together and how they work are missing so much. When it comes to Just Do It, if you ever watch Finding Nemo, let me put it in the other direction for the rest of the people. Finding Nemo has a little fish named Dory in there. She's a Dory bull. And her little mantra is just keep swimming. Then there's the age old saying, one foot in front of the other. Just keep swimming. Just do it. By the way, the just do it philosophy eliminates anxiety. Whenever I am sitting here looking at a project that I have to do, whatever that project is, whether it's cleaning the house, uh, writing a book, recording audiobooks in particular recently, streaming that day, or, or binge watching something on Netflix, just do it. That means just start. Just keep swimming. It's that simple. Now, Aaron, any tips on how do you just well, do it? The old phrase, how do you eat an elephant? 
one bite at a time. You, you break it down into small bite-sized chunks. And usually I get it drunk um, first and get some lotion and mood lighting. Uh-huh. Uh, but no, it's... Me, I've, I've always had a philosophy, and this goes back to my Marine Corps days, of don't overthink the problem. Mm-hmm. Start with the simplest solution that is going to eliminate the problem in front of you. It doesn't matter what it is. If you got a vehicle stuck in the mud, what is going to get my vehicle out of the mud? It doesn't matter if it's going to create a bunch of new problems. All those problems are going to be smaller than the one you got right now. You can sure. fix those problems. Just, okay, what's, what's my next problem after that? But See. get rid of this one in front of me. See, something else I say is you got to keep in mind a big problem is made up by, of a dozen or more smaller problems. It's made up of smaller problems, however many that is. So if we're going with stuck in the mud, what's your first problem? My wheel can't get any traction. Solve that first. How do you get it traction? You know, what do you do for that? And it's a matter of just breaking it down. Once you find something that it can get traction on, whether it's a piece of wood, branches shoved in there, leaves, cat, or whatever, the body of that annoying kid, whatever, then it's a matter of the next problem and then the next. And you break down any larger problem into smaller problems, and you'll get through it. But I think going back to the original thing, just do it, that comes down to what Aaron said of don't overthink the problem. It almost comes down to quit thinking. When you just do it, you're not thinking, you're acting. Because when you're thinking, then you can build the anxiety, you can build the worry, you can build the fear. When you're doing, it's amazing. I don't know if anybody else has ever been in a fight. But when I was younger, I got into a lot of them. Because people would say shit or do shit to me. And though I was a foot smaller and 40 pounds lighter, I would say shit or do shit back because I just, I didn't take well to being bullied. Now, this means I got in a lot of fights. (laughs) But if somebody says, I'm going to come find you and kick your ass, it gave me time to worry about it and think about it. If they jumped me or just acted, I never had a chance to get my mind involved. I had to react. It's kind of like the other day. First time ever I think I've had this happen to me. I had some oil splash out of my uh, skillet, and the skillet caught fire. You don't have time to think about it. You have time to act. So, by the way, the end result of that is I pulled out the lid and put it on the damn skillet and waited for, you know, removed it from the heat and waited. Um... But yeah, not letting yourself dwell on something makes a huge difference. And this goes for everything, whether it's fitness, quitting smoking, getting that new job, etc. Aaron, you've dealt with anxiety. What were your triggers? Mm -hmm. What would make, what was creating the anxiety for you? See, for me... At the time... uh Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to give you a moment. Uh, at to the think time, about it, it was freaking. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. We've got to work on this system. Um, we keep doing this to each other. So here's the deal. You're my guest. You'll always go first. Go. No. At the time, it was probably it was health related more than anything else. So it was really, um, the the health and the uncertainty more than anything else. It was. Uh, unknowns. Okay. Once I figured out, freaking it didn't matter. Freaking anxiety disappeared. That that is a truth. Also, that goes light right along with just do it. It doesn't matter. When I'm at work, I'm working in one of the most stressful positions in my area. But the bottom line is, I know it'll all get done before I go home. And if it doesn't, and I do a horrible job, and they fire me, I will have a new job. There's not really anything to stress about, unless if I want to. But with my anxiety and everything, I had a problem going to work. Once I was at work, I was at fine. But going to work, getting up in the morning, getting dressed, leaving the house, making that drive. 
was an issue for me, a huge issue. And it wasn't even that I was dwelling on anything in particular. But I was dwelling on something. To the point where, in my life, there have been multiple times where I have quit a job halfway to work. And the, the bottom line is now, to, to block these things, I put something else in front of me. In this case, an audiobook works great for me. Um, straight up music doesn't, I think. But if I get something that engages my mind and keeps it busy, there's no chance for it to wander off and worry. It's focused on... By the way, Edgar Rice Burroughs did Tarzan, John Carter books, etc. You with me on this, Aaron? What are you looking at? Mm -hmm. he, no. just, he just totally husband uh -huh me. Um, no, uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs. Not that good of a writer. Um, somewhere between a 19-year-old and a Harlequin romance, honestly. So promising. He, he all had, all of his stuff was quantity based. Yeah, it was definitely form a form. It was just pure pulp. Now, Arthur Conan Doyle, on the other hand, pretty good writing. His later stuff was the 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 initial stuff. Okay, here's the really deal. newspaper stuff. The first one I'm reading of his via audiobook is The okay. Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, which is not his first stuff. So I'm guessing what you're talking about is, yeah, there was this curve, the learning curve of his writing, but still significantly okay. better than Edgar Rice Burroughs, because I've listened to four or five of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Oh, he's significantly better than Burroughs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, but yeah, I've definitely seen this arc in the craft over the past 100 to 150 years. The same we have in uh, cartoons, art in general, architecture, um, which I had never thought about it for writing because writing seems like such a basic thing that we've been doing for thousands of years. But if you look at art throughout the years from the Egyptians, for a starter point, forward, you'll see the... Even the art we have now is better than the art we had in the 60s. Just look at cartooning. Uh, look at pencil sketches of different things. And you see, as a society, our level of craft has increased. Well, okay, so you talk about cartooning and things, and you start going, okay... Uh, you go... The 20s, 30s, mm -hmm. 40s of your um, your Bugs Bunnies and things like that. Mm -hmm. Nice, clean stuff. Right. Okay. Then we get into the 60s and 70s, your Hanna-Barbera. Now and you're talking about animation. Right. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. I was actually referring to a still, one cell of animation if you want. Oh, okay. You know, but yeah, we can go into animation also, but if we go all the way back to Egyptian time, of course there wasn't animation back then that we know of. I got you. But, uh, yeah, but we know even, of. even over the past hundred years for animation, because animation is about a hundred years old at this point. Oh, yeah, yeah. Older, if you want to go into account of the flip books that we used to have in the at the theme parks that you'd just it was multiple pages that you'd turn the thing and it'd show you a little movie of a, two characters on a anyhow. Um, you were saying Bugs Bunny, nice clean into the 60s with Hanna Barbera, and don't forget we can also look at uh, superhero stuff then versus now. Yep. Starting in the well, 70s, I think we got our first superhero cartoons. Yeah. Uh, the 60s and 70s were kind of a weird one because the Hanna-Barbera uh, changed how they did the animation. Uh, rather than doing full cells, they did partial cells and stuff like right. that. Um, which really changed the way a lot of things were done. Right. Yeah, and nowadays with computerization, then, there's there's no comparison comparing... Because of the work style of generating it now versus then, you you can't compare. 
But if you look at comic no, books no, no. now versus comic books from the 20s, look at how that art form has changed. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you go from the kind of the die cuts and stuff like that to the... Um, well, shoot. Honestly, a lot of the stuff from the 70s to the 80s to the early 90s is so much cleaner than yeah. the mid 90s to the early 2000s and then it kind of got nicer again right and then it's all technique well i have a few the streamers production I value went up but mm -hmm. not necessarily the art went up i have a few streamers i follow now most of them are doing it digitally nowadays but I have one in particular that's done Deadpool, and he's working on a, a, a Sandman title for DC. Mm -hmm. And he streams right here on Twitch. And just look at his raw pencil sketch. He's not doing coloring or inking or anything like that. Compare that to a comic book. And he's, and he's, he's using comic book boards. Um, compare that to... The stuff from a hundred years ago, from when in what is it, twenty seven or twenty nine, when Action Comics number one came out, or Detective Comics number one. Okay. Hold on a second. Let me. I, I don't even remember. Uh, let me just do a quick check for so I get us at least a reference. I want to say they're about a hundred years old. Um, really? They're close, too. Thirty-eight. I was off by ten years. My mistake there. Now, let me check Detective. By the way, after reading the Barsoom comics... By the, and that one is thirty-five. Okay, so we're still... 80 years in at least. How about that? Um, after reading Edgar Rice Burroughs' Barsoom John Carter books, I think Superman was modeled after John Carter, but instead of the concept of a human going to another planet that had lower gravity, he because originally Superman, he literally leaped tall buildings. He could jump very high. Mm -hmm. He was very dexterous and had a denser skin because of the gravity of the planet he came from. It didn't have anything to do with the yellow sun and radiation at that point in time. It was just a gravity difference. So stronger, faster, and able to leap. This is exactly what John Carter can do in the Barsoom, using the term loosely, novels, that's exactly, he is Superman on Mars. And I'm thinking whoever wrote Action Comics number one perhaps was a fan of Edgar Rice Burroughs and went, what if somebody from a different planet came here and we had the lesser gravity? What would he be like here on Earth? Anyhow, we're going to wrap this up. Any closing thoughts on any of the topics we've covered? No, um... Really, the big thing is if we're going to talk about washboard abs and things like that, it's almost entirely nutrition. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong, fitness is important, mm -hmm. okay? But if we're talking physique, just base physique, nutrition is 75% exercise, 25% at most. Okay. Good to know. So you guys have a great night. Thank you for joining us. And uh, I may be back tomorrow with some audiobook stuff. We'll see. Let's get some outro music and get on out of here. Good night, guys. Thanks for joining us in the discussion shenanigans tonight. You are the one thing that makes the show what it is. Don't forget to join us at the Tavern next week. Until then, have fun, keep learning, and be good to one another. Now, raise your glass in good cheer. Enjoy the small moments every day steamy dreams every minute.